all of a sudden your Toyota got real loud, you looked under and you saw this. This video is for you. We're going to do oxygen sensor flange stud repair. Check the pink comment for the time stamps. Diagnostics is next. Repair options are described at about the 345 mark. The stud removal starts at about the 850 mark. Replacement parts are discussed at about the 2435 mark. The stud install starts at about the 2815 mark. The owner of this 1998 RAV4 described the symptoms to me as uh, suddenly it was a little bit louder while driving and then a few days into that while accelerating onto the highway it suddenly went much louder. So it sounded like an exhaust leak problem when I went to pick up the vehicle. I decided to have a quick look under, see if I could see anything obvious, and there was something real obvious, which is that right there. You're looking at the opening for the number two, the secondary oxygen sensor, the post-cat oxygen sensor, and this ought to be in here like that. As you can see, there's a failure of two nuts here. I did clean this up. I wasn't going to make a video, then I decided, you know what, this might, this might become more common as rust is growing on these older cars. This was real rusty there wasn't anything left as the stud here you can see it's just like that same deal here uh, and obviously this this had the two locking nuts on it and they just rusted out and in this case they didn't rust and fall off just the nuts they rusted and they took those whole studs with them so they probably rusted out a little bit and then there was a little vibration and then that maybe weakened the stud whatever the case may be this ought to have a gasket here. This gas, the gasket's gone as well. Here's a look at another Toyota, same spot, that uh, post cat 2 sensor. I just wanted to show this because I believe that 98 RAV4 that we're working on would have had this little shield on here. So you can see when those nuts fell off and the studs came off, this shield would have fallen off as well, which is why we can't see it on the current one we're working on. I'll put up this part number if that's something you would run want to replace. Some Toyotas have this, some don't. I'm not sure about exactly how essential it is. I'm not even sure if it's a heat shield or like a, a water deal. Um, I don't have time to get this uh, and get, uh, I can't wait on the repair. The owner needs her car back on this one. So I'll, I'll order this and have it on hand and make a swap in later, but you'll, you'll see this repair without replacing this. I did want to show you what this looks like. This is also going to be missing on a lot of older Toyotas. Cause this is aluminum but these fasteners here are steel and they'll rust out and this will just fall down end up on the side of the road this is a heat shield for the cat the symptoms on this is um the owner had a slight little rattle came on pretty quickly within about a week owner had a slight little rattle and then the exhaust sounded a little louder and then the exhaust was really loud so i'll let you hear that right now we'll replicate that that's holding it in that's the initial rattle when it pops out. So here in the cab, I've got the window down. I'll start it up. This oxygen sensor is in place, but you know, it's still a bit, it's still got a leak since there's no nuts on it. But I'll show you, you can even hear the, the rattle and some of the extra noise from this position. You hear that kind of rattle right there when it first started up. It's much louder than normal. And then you'll hear the rattle when I get up to uh, close to 2000 RPM. So it gets pretty loud and obvious when that goes popping out as it did in this situation. Uh, there's a few different repair options. I'm going to try. My goal is to try to remove these studs. I'm going to see if I can remove these studs and replace them. That would be ideal. Obviously, I don't want to just replace this whole stretch because there's a catalytic converter right here. There's nothing wrong with this cat. There's no reason to replace it. It would be very difficult if not impossible to obtain an OEM one and then if you don't have OEM you deal with aftermarket and all the consequences of that. The next option would be cutting here, coming back in with a piece that has a replacement section on here or you can also get a repair flange that's got the studs on it. Those are more technical repairs because they were they, those would require obviously welding. So if I have to do that, I'll do that. I'll come up with some solution, but what I'm hoping to, to accomplish is to remove these studs because that would be the cheapest, the easiest, the fastest, and the most DIY friendly. I'm not positive about this particular oxygen sensor here, but 
Um, also, sometimes you can unscrew them from this flange, the, uh, the O2 sensor. They've got, they'll have threads in there. Then you can change the mounting style. So you would still have to weld, you'd weld the plate on here, but the plate would have threading on the inside portion. So instead of it mounting with nuts, you would screw the, the uh, O2 sensor in. Like I said, I'm not sure if there's threads on this particular one. Um, so the downside with that is you, if, if that's just what you decided to do, you would have to replace the oxygen sensor if your oxygen sensor doesn't have threads behind this flange. However, um, I'm going to try to reuse this oxygen sensor too. So that's why the goal is going to be stud extraction. Here is the bolt extractor, in this case stud extractor that I'm going to use. And I don't know about any of the knockoffs, but this particular one, this one from Aries, Part number 716, this thing gets the job done. This thing is great. So how this works is you can see there's these jaws in there. And as I turn this counterclockwise, right, because we're going for removal, whether it's a broken bolt or in our case, a broken stud, you can see those jaws are coming closer and closer together. So they'll clamp on whatever size, um, you know, there's a range, but this is a pretty wide range. It'll clamp on to our uh, M8 stud. And then once we're on there somewhat, we'll tighten it a bit more by holding this outside part. And that's a 36, or you could just use a crescent wrench or even channel locks if you haven't got a crescent wrench, we'll hold that. And then this part here, again, either another crescent wrench or a 24, if you have a 24. And this will, once we're to tighten it on there, that extra bit, remember we're tightening to loosen, so we're going to be turning counterclockwise to tighten. We'll tighten it up like that. And then once it's on that stud real well, you can either come back with the 24 or, you know, crescent wrench and turn counterclockwise to get this thing to really bite onto that stud and hopefully break it free. Or you can see there's a spot for a 3 8 inch ratchet so we can go on with the ratchet which is nice because you get that extra leverage you keep your ratchet in the regular off position you know counterclockwise and then get on there and hopefully psh, that breaks free uh, it's going to depend on how much room you have on this setup i am going to be able to get the ratchet in there but if i didn't like i said i would just go and use it here i'm going to hit that area with a lot of heat the reason is because i do not want to fail with this on my first try. You really only get one try with an extractor like this. And I, <laughs> if I fail on the first try, really the only try, this extractor is likely going to just shear that bolt or the stud right off. And then this extractor goes away and the drill comes out because I'll have it, you'll have that stud sheared off right at the right flush. And so then it's going to be either drill it out or come back, say, forget it and weld a new flange on there. So hopefully this works. To increase that likelihood of success, I'm, I'm going to use a lot of heat. A couple of minutes, probably um, map gas, map gas or propane, get it nice and hot all around that area. And then uh, as soon as I got the gas off and it's at a good high temp, a couple few hundred degrees, then psh, try to turn this counterclockwise and hopefully that'll do the trick. If you don't have a torch, remember your exhaust gets real hot. So you could always just idle the car for a little while and that'll get real hot back there. Maybe not as hot as it does with the torch, but it's better than nothing. So if you have no other option, idle it up and uh, let it run for a little bit. Let that get real hot on there uh, and try it that way. I'm debating whether I should heat this whole thing up and then stick the stud remover on and work quickly and break it free. Or if I should stick the, put the stud remover on and then heat up this part to expand this part. I think I'm going to give that a shot first, and if I get a second chance, i.e. if I don't just shear the stud right off, then I'll try it the other way. So I'm looking under directly right here to make sure that I get this part of the mandrel real flush up against here. I don't want there being any crookedness, especially since it's such a short stud. So I'm going to get that on there really well. And then this, the black part here, the black part turns, I'm going to hold it in place really well, and then the black part turns counterclockwise as much as I can, and then I'll have to grab a tool. Uh, it's going to, so it's still pretty loose, so I'm going to use a 36 on this outside part here. You could just use a crescent wrench if you don't have a 36 or even like channel locks. 
I'm going to hold that on there and then I'll just use the um, this in a better position. There we go. And then I'll use the 24 to tighten up this here, which again, for in this case, tightening is going to be counterclockwise. I'm trying to hold this on here real nice and straight and so there's no gap. I don't want any kind of turn on that stud. So there you can see it's tightened up. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some heat. If you're going to be under here with a torch like me, just be aware of where the flames are going and where flammable things are. And let's heat this up for a little bit. It's getting pretty hot. I think I'm going to give that a shot. Turn this gas off. And let's see. Let's see what we get. Oh, I'm getting something. Well, there we go. Oh, I hope this is turning that stud out. Ah, oh, yes, it is. So weak. I don't want to touch this because, hey, there we go. How about that? Ooh, hot. I let everything cool down. That's that stud. There's the broken part and there's the not broken part. That went better than I was expecting, I gotta say. And looking in there, it looks like those threads are still good. I don't even think I'm gonna have to retop that or anything. The threads look the threads look good. It'll we'll see when we get the new studs how well they go in. Might have to chase it, might have to clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna try it now on this side. This is actually pretty warm here from the heat transferring up there. I got just enough room with my setup where I don't have to move this heat shield. But if your ratchet is running into this heat shield, then just remove these fasteners. Look like they're a few 10 millimeter fasteners and push the heat shield that way just so that you're not, uh, you, you know, you could still use it as a heat shield for your torch. I think I'm gonna be able to just sneak in here. So we're gonna do that exact same setup uh, again to get this tool on. I'm gonna make sure I look real well directly this way so that I don't have it on sideways at all. This is a much shorter stretch of of studs so we'll see how well this works on this this one this will be the real challenge maybe we get lucky again okay and i'm going to turn it counterclockwise by hand to tighten it up okay, it's tightened up some and then i'm going to come back on with the 24 and the 36 Make sure I'm looking under there, making sure it's not crooked at all. I don't want it to be crooked at all. That heated up pretty well. Let's see if we get lucky again. Oh, it sounds like it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm running out of real estate with my tools, so I have to get this. It has turned the stud. tool out before I continue anymore and grab the wrench. Right. Hooray. 
Now to get that stud out of those teeth, hold this part here where there's that 36. And then remember we turned this counterclockwise to tighten it, so we're going to turn it clockwise to loosen it. Let's see if I can do this in front of the camera and show you. Oops, there it goes. Okay. And then once you have that, ooh, 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 it's still pretty hot. You just loosen that up and that stud will come. That stud extractor worked so well, it far exceeded my expectations. I honestly wasn't expecting it to work. So hopefully if you're in this situation, the stud extractor works for you too. The reason I, I started with the stud extractor instead of doing what I was most inclined to do, which would be to just weld a nut on here, is just simply because I know a lot of people don't have welders. And so I wanted to try to come up with the solution where you know anybody watching the video could, could spend 20, 25 bucks on a tool and get that that stud extractor and in my case it really worked well. The process I decided to try as you saw was first use this the stud extractor if the stud extractor didn't work or if it sheared it right off. Plan B was going to be to weld a nut onto whatever was left of the stud. It, sometimes when you do that you have to put a washer and then weld the weld what's left of the stud to the washer and then weld the nut to the to the uh, washer. If that didn't work, or if um, I didn't have a welder, or if it broke too far into the hole, then plan C was going to be just to drill it out. So there's enough room down here. It's It wouldn't be fun, but it would be possible without disconnecting anything on the exhaust to drill this out, clean it up, and then you know put in a new stud. This one here, I'd run into some real estate on this particular model. So because there's a lot of rust on this exhaust i wouldn't want to disconnect anything that i didn't have to um what i would do is go down to the muffler slip uh the muff slip the exhaust off of the the uh, hanger down there by the muffler just so that it could move down just a little bit i put a support here don't want to stress out the other joint um, but just so i could get this exhaust to come down you know an inch and a half or so so i could get in here with the tool so that would be lined up like that. So those are all some ideas that um, maybe, hopefully you don't have to use them, hopefully the stud extractor works for you. Last thing I wanna mention with the repairs, um, if you ended up deciding to go with that reflant with the flange and you're gonna weld it on the one with the studs on it from like Yoda Shop or there's other places, bear in mind you, you have to keep this geometry, uh, be aware of this geometry because if you just weld a new flange on top of here, you're gonna end up spacing this O2 sensor. Right, those two sensors are supposed to be there. If you just weld a, weld a new flange on there and you don't take down some of the material, it's going to be like that. And so that's going to serve as an O2 sensor spacer. Depending on your state and jurisdiction and all of that, that may be okay. It may not be okay. It just depends. I just do want to mention that, though, if you are going to uh, use any of, if you are going to do the new flange thing, if this is all rusted out and you're already having to take down material and it's going to be pretty much the same geometry, then it doesn't matter. But if you were um, coming out too much, then it might matter. I don't know. Just wanted to mention that. I'm happy I don't have to deal with that because that stud extractor worked so well, like magic. Check this out. I got a new rental from AutoZone. This is OEM Tools 57142 and it was brand new. I think they just started having these maybe. I'm not sure, but Thread Restorer Set. I don't remember seeing this before, at least at my local uh, AutoZone, but I got this now. First one to use it was all brand new. And look at all these great pieces in here. So we've got thread files. There's a file on this side too. You take that off and put it there to use that side. A whole bunch of Whole bunch of sizes for thread files. We got uh, nut style chasers to clean up studs and nuts or studs and bolts, and then we've got regular thread chasers for holes and nuts. So this one in particular right here, this is an M8125. It is marked. You might be able to see the mark there. Uh, I'm going to use this to clean up those two holes before we install the studs. You might be able to tell I did a little work on those threads, but I'm going to do a little bit more and go in with the thread chaser so i'm just going to stick this in here so i don't end up accidentally shooting some pv blaster i'm going to use pv blaster to clean up these threads um you might choose to use something else i'm using pv blaster because i do have compressed air so i'll be able to really clean them up after um i don't want them tremendously lubricated after i get done cleaning them out so get that let that set for a second and then go in with the thread chaser on this particular one, it's like a maybe an 11 millimeter or what is this, 7 16ths or so. So I just have a ratcheting wrench. 
Um, I'm going to get this started on here and see if I can't clean this up a little bit. Let it grab. Let's get it in my hand. Oh, it's actually going in pretty well on that one. Oh, that's encouraging. Okay. I don't think it's going to be as easy on the top one. I think it's going to give me a little bit of trouble on the top one. Oh, that feels really good. All right, so I'll just take this down and then reverse it. Clean it off and see how we're doing. All right, you can see a little bit on there. better. Alright, just a few times on there and this is going in pretty well now. Might need just a little bit more work, but we'll go ahead and move up to this top one. Top one might be a little bit more challenging. Let's see. Let get that started on there. Okay, it's, that's tighter right away. Let's see. Oops, wrong way. And this one needs a little bit more work. You can see it's giving a little bit more opposition. It's not too bad. So I'm just going to go in about that far, and then I'm going to back this one out, clean it off, and then do it again before I go. Go in again here. Tightens up there. It's not too bad though. It's not flipping. I'm gonna stop. Back it out. Can't explain. It's not taking any crazy amounts of metal off it or anything. I should be able to go all the way this time. Let's see. Yep, feels good. Okay. And I'll make a several passes on this one, probably four, four or five. Ideally, I want to be able to turn this in and out by hand, but we'll see. Well, it took a few passes, but I got these both cleaned up adequately that I can turn this thread chaser in by hand all the way in and out. And so that's great. If you can't, for one reason or another, get the threads cleaned up, just keep that in mind when you're installing your studs because you don't, if you get if you're getting uh, interference, then you're going to want to back off because you don't want to <laughs> break your studs on your new studs and just be back to square one. But this thread chaser works really well. This is a great rental. Take a look at your gasket surface here, this part right around here, and see if you need to clean it up any. Um, I just cleaned it up a little bit with some sandpaper because it was rusty in spots. This is the gasket, and it's going to go on this way. With that side facing the O2 sensor, you can kind of see the shape of it in this old, the old, the shape of the old one on that sensor. I gotta clean that up yet, but um, this is this gasket is a typical exhaust gasket. It's gonna deform quite a bit, so you don't need a super smooth surface here. This is gonna deform and clamp into into place, and we're just sealing around here. There's no exhaust coming through these holes, just this hole. So. That's the surface that we're, that we're uh, going to clean up just to make sure that we don't get an exhaust leak. Use a new gasket and it. it's very unlikely that you're going to get an exhaust leak though. There's what's left of our old studs. That's the side that was in the hole. And then that's the side that was in the hole there. So I don't have time to wait for these Toyota parts to get in. I'll put up that part number if you'd like to do that. Those would be superior because those will be 10.9. 
Um, these I found though, these are going to work. These are, these are grade eight. And so what I did was, uh, I made sure that it wasn't, it wasn't, it, this you can see it's a tad bit longer there than the uh, OE, but there's still room below the hole. I should say below the uh, stud into the hole because I use this. Put that into the hole to make sure because you do not want to get a stud that's going to bottom out. You want to have a little bit of, um, it's going to tighten up as it goes further into those threads. You don't want it all the way touching the bottom. And you, again, you can see that there with that size, that length difference from the original. This one will work. That original one was even shorter though. So the hole is a little bit longer, let's say like that. If you're interested to use these, I got these at Napa. It's actually from a water pump stud kit for General Motors. But it'll work here. Like I said, it is grade 8, but that's all right. I prefer 10.9, but this will work. This kit comes with a locking washer and a matching nut. I'm not going to use these, though. I am going to go with a prevailing torque locking nut. You can see the shape there, that that is not a circle. It's kind of a ellipse or oval shape there. And that's because this thing will deform and clamp as it's turned on here and that'll help prevent it from backing off since this gets so hot. If you're interested to use those, I think I got these at Advance Auto or AutoZone. There's a part number there and these weren't too expensive. I think this kit was like five bucks and these I think were like three or four bucks. Don't know for sure with these exact ones but a lot of the Toyota studs they'll have a feature on the end to help install so it'll be like an external torque seat you can stick a socket on or it might be keyed for a hex and that's nice because you can use a tool to install these instead of having to do anything touching the threads but we can still install these you can see that doesn't have any such features so we just need two nuts these nuts for example from the I'm not using this stuff that came with it but I can use these if I'd like you just put these on here like this all right and then what we'll do is turn them into each other and now we've basically created a bolt head so now we can use this top one, turning this top one to turn this into the hole. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use these nuts. These nuts will work if this is all the only ones you have. I'm not going to use these particular ones because I happen to have some of these flange ones. And I like the flange ones because it's just a little easier when you have two wrenches on it. I'll show you what I mean. See, I put this one that way. So we'll go like, let's say to there. And then this one's going to turn into it like that. Okay, so there's our bolt head. It just makes it easier when it comes time to... So when we when we we'll have it like this, and we want to kind of turn them a little into each other to tighten them up. These are both 13. We just want it tight. Okay, we've got our bolt head. I shouldn't say tight. Don't make it so tight that when you go to loosen this later, you're going to back accidentally back the stud out. But this will work. But see, see why I like that flange? because this isn't moving up. When you have the two regular nuts that don't have the flanges, you just gotta be a little bit more careful. It's totally possible, it's just a little preference, like I said. So I got the holes cleaned out, and I got that surface cleaned up, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started on one of these studs. I guess I'll just go on the top one first, since I uh, won't interfere. I'll get this started here. Alright, grab my 13 in this case. Oops. I gotta get a shorter wrench. The wrench is just a little too long, it's running into too many things, so let's keep going here with a shorter wrench. That's tightening up. Right there, okay. Now we'll go ahead and back these nuts off. We we'll use two 13 millimeter open end wrenches. So 
So I'm going to hold this one real firm so that that doesn't turn the stud while I turn counterclockwise to loosen this top nut. Here we go. Okay. And now I'll be able to bring that other nut off. Hopefully without turning the stud. Good. It's not turning the stud. All right. These studs are a real good match to the originals, even though they're not the Toyota OE. But if you're working with a slightly different um, dimension on that side and you think you might be sticking out a little too much, before you start install your second stud, go ahead and just swing your gasket on and have a look with the oxygen sen sensor in place to make sure that you you do indeed have threads. All right, so see what I mean here so when we put this when we put a nut on it's going to be onto threads and not onto a part say where there wouldn't be any threads all right depending on the type of stud you're using you shouldn't have that problem if you use these studs or if you use the OE studs but just double check that oh, we'll get this other stud in here same deal as before in my case here 13 millimeter Hold that and loosen. There we go. Let me make sure I can turn this back one. Good. Without turning the stud. Okay. Alright, and we're in business. We grab our gasket, and again, that side goes facing the exhaust, and this kind of special looking side facing the sensor. Grab that sensor. There's no up or down to the sensor. Go in whichever way will work for you. And since I'm using these these uh, nuts that don't have the flange on it, I'm going to use washers. Use the right nuts with the flanges on them, and you won't have to worry about that. You'll just put the the pinch nuts right back right on. I would really prefer to have that than this setup, but I think this will be okay. If you have the original setup, uh, the stud with the um, the Toyota pinch nuts and all that torque is 32 foot pounds. We'll see what I can get on these. Probably be able to do that. So get these nuts in place, but before you to the point where you can where it's ready to start clamping, you're going to want to alternate back and forth just to get it get the gasket sealed real well. So just give a little on one side and over the other. Oops, just so it's gonna go on evenly. Okay, I'm gonna switch now to the torque wrench. Let's see if I can do 32 foot pounds. This torque wrench is a little long. Don't have a ton of room down here. I had to move the camera out of my way, but I'm pretty sure I'm getting pretty close. So yeah, there it is. Yep, all right. So this looks good. If you had this out any, just make sure that you've got the right amount of slack. If you look over at it, there's probably a little bit of dirt and it'll give you an idea about where this was originally in this little bracket. If, you're, if you've if you got a bracket right there on your setup for this this uh, wiring and this, this looks good. So all we got to do now is start her up and check for exhaust leaks. We're back in the cab now. I've got the window down just as before and we'll see how she sounds now. All right, much better. And interestingly, this never did set off a check engine light. So we'll go back up to about 2,000 RPM and see if we hear any rattles. Shouldn't. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Sounds much better. Looks like we're in business. She started up well and sounds good, so I took her for a little drive. Now we're back. I'm going to double check for exhaust leaks by partially obstructing the tailpipe so that I can build up a little bit more pressure here. And I'm going to just shoot some soapy water on here and see if we get any bubbles. One way to check for exhaust leaks is you can partially obstruct the exhaust like with a rag. That'll build up the back pressure a little bit and along these pipes and then at the spot where I was just working I'll spray some soapy water mix and um, if there's a leak the air will come out and it'll make little bubbles. It'll make it pretty apparent if there's an exhaust leak. If you have a helper have them hold this rag it'll pop out if you just shove it in. There's going to be enough regular um, back pressure here to push this rag right out. I'm working alone right now so I'm going to put a piece of wood up here to hold it in for me while I head back to that sensor. So I've got it backed up there some. I'm going to head over to that sensor quickly. And that looks good on this side. I don't see any bubbles. I don't see any bubbles over here either. So it looks like that repair works. I can recommend that Dorman gasket. All right, so not only is this repaired, but now it's nice and clean. Just got a soapy water bath. I hope this video was helpful for you fixing your exhaust studs. Thank you for watching and good luck with your repair.